all right guys welcome back to mmg invest and wolfpack cryptos in today's video let's talk about the stock market and the bond market first of all this is not financial advice this is just my opinion this channel is more about education and learning how to trade and economics and all of that fun stuff so the yield curve it's still um inverting and i've talked about that numerous times first of all let's get something straight here uh in my previous videos right when the stock market started correcting as you can see right here when all of this was happening when all of this was happening right i was saying that the, that the top the all-time high is in and i've also said that this is a bull trap and there's already a few people saying oh i'm wrong and the stock market's going to go to all-time highs it's going to keep rising and rising all right well listen i am right no matter what happens i know i just said that if the stock market falls and we don't make a new all-time high and this is it right and we go into recession depression whatever I'm right if the stock market goes higher and it keeps going higher and higher and goes past all-time highs this is S&P 500 daily chart if it goes past 2900 goes past 3000 I'm still right do you want to know why because I don't care what the stock market does I only care about what's gonna happen to gold and silver because that's my real trade you see instead of shorting the stock market which is dangerous you could just buy gold and silver stocks or trade the the ETFs and it, you're still shorting the stock market except the downside risk is very minimal compared to the upside potential if you're shorting the stock market there's a lot of risk and that's why i don't like shorting if anything i'll buy an inverse etf to uh equities like inverse qqq or russell or one of those etfs right which the pe ratios on those companies that comprise of those etfs is like through the roof anyways the reason i say that is this is the Venezuelan stock market and uh, look at this people are starving right they're starving to death the economy is fully imploded in Venezuela they can barely keep the lights on but look at their stock market it keeps going higher and higher so just because the stock market's going up that doesn't mean that uh, the economy is not crashing why is that why is this happening why this is the venezuelan stock market look it up um yeah it did crash right here it just dropped like a rock but it's still historically high i mean it's still higher than it was in 2018 2017 2016. their hyper hyperinflation really started kicking off uh I'm not exactly sure I think uh, 2012 10 13 it's when things the inflation really started taking off and look at their stock market <laughs> so you know the economy it doesn't matter what the stock market is the real economy is detached from the stock market and that's because stocks go up versus the fiat currency now if you adjust the value of the stock price to inflation then when you go to sell your stocks you lost money but it but relative to fiat in fiat terms your stock went up let me explain this so google could go up 500 percent in the next 10 years but if you adjust it for inflation for the amount of value that the dollar fell you could sell your Google stock like five times the value it is today in fiat terms and dollars and you still lost money even if it went up 
500%. So you have to understand this correlation. All right. So if the stock market goes up, goes past all-time highs, the reason it went past all-time highs was because the Fed is starting to lower rates again and it's starting to print up print more money. It's coming in with more QE, quantitative easing, right? So if that happens, yes, the stock market's going to keep going higher and higher. But my gold stocks are going to go up even higher. Uh, if you adjust it for inflation all right now let's take a look at the yields here's the S&P 500 the blue lines the S&P 500 this is a weekly chart the the candlesticks down here is the 10-year yield on the 10-year uh, bond treasury yield on the bond you can see that uh, you can see the divergence, right? The yield has been falling since 2009 like crazy. They've kept them artificially low, and the stock market's been, it's been taking off. And that's because the lower the yields are, the more money is being lent, the more fractional reserve lending is happening, and then they also did quantitative easing as well. Now you can see that they've been raising rates since the end of 2006 and it's been slowly rising and it's only risen to 2.5 percent which is nothing and you can see that the stock market is starting to flutter it's losing momentum there isn't as much money uh, going into Wall Street going into uh, the economy and these corporations they keep doing corporate buybacks as well which also pumps up the market so um that's how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. All of this quantitative easing, low interest rates, it goes into the stock market. And then who benefits from that? The rich. People who own assets and who own parts, uh, shares and, of corporations and companies. And the corporations get richer, right? Meanwhile, your average Joe Schmo doesn't get richer. Now, the middle class, yes, they do have some retirement and uh, Roth IRAs and whatever. But those, it's just paper money. But the baby boomers are going to be forced to start liquidating their retirement, right? So they can live off of it. So that's another reason why the stock market cannot keep going higher and higher. And everyone is just very complacent right now. Very complacent. They think it's going to keep going higher. And yes, technically it can. But I'm telling you, if the stock market's going higher, they're sacrificing the dollar. And they're sacrificing the real economy to make the stock market go higher. And Trump's going to say, it's the greatest. The stock market's never performed like this. It's the greatest economy ever. No, it's not. The stock market does not reflect the real Main Street economy. It's just a financial bubble. And when it pops, the, the real economy is going to suffer even more because the corporations are going to go under and everyone's going to lose their jobs. So, yeah, stock market could go higher. I don't care. I'm still going to make money. Because I'm not shorting the stock market by just straight up shorting it. I'm buying gold and silver stocks. You guys have to understand that. And people in the trolls in the comment section, they're, they're retarded. They, they, they don't understand this. Alright, so um, why can't I do this? Why am I? So let's go back to the all the charts. What is this? I'm on the wrong one. All right. So here's the dollar. And I'm not going to do, uh, you know, I'm not going too in depth with the TA. There's many, I'm just talking, uh, I'm just thinking out loud. All right, guys, it could be wrong, right? Short term, the dollar, yeah, it could uh, go up if Brexit and Europe uh, are having major problems in China. At the same time, the dollar could tank at any given moment if the Fed ha is forced to capitulate even more by saying, all right, we're going to start cutting rates. And you already see this talk on mainstream media. Look at this. Um, look at this. Brace for rate cut. 
So they're talking about that on MSNBC because there's another FOMC meeting coming this Wednesday. Trump's tax cuts forcing Fed to ease rates. What? How, how the, what do the tax cuts have anything to do with the federal funds rate? Nothing. Nothing. This is just a blame game. And I, I talked about that in my last video, right? The 60 Minutes interview with the Fed. It was literally a blame game. Basically, they were trying, they were prepping the public and th they were putting out there all of the things they could blame besides themselves. Uh, the global economy, uh, Europe, China, trade war. Um, what else? Uh, I, you know, I watch that video if you haven't. I like this though. State Attorney General warns Facebook, Google are too big. They are their monopolies. But this is probably grandstanding. I mean, they're not going to do anything because guess who owns uh, DC? It's these mega corporations. Um, treasury yields look past strong equity performance. So, um, what what are they saying by that? So the yield um is signaling. Where is it? The yield is signaling. Let's go to a smaller time frame here. Let's go to a four hourly. Yields keep falling on the 10 year. On the shorter term uh, yields, the shorter term debt, the yield is rising. That's how you get an inverted rate. So when the 30 year and the 10 year start, dry, start dropping the, the yield on the interest rates, that signals that the stock market is going to have a correction. And you can see right here that the yield keeps dropping and dropping on the, on the, on the larger bonds. And it's not, it's signaling that um, this, this is possibly a bull trap, like I've been saying for the past few weeks, right, and months, that this will be a bull trap. And um, you see a lot of buying come in, they're buying bonds, but the yield is dropping. And if you look at a historic chart on the 10-year yield, it's it we're, we've been in a multi-decade bear market on yields and that's gonna flip it, it has to flip in the next uh, few years right because it can't forever keep going down it, I mean they might the Fed might permanently or somehow force yields to be permanently low like Japan did but it's not gonna work out like it did it for Japan. You're not going to just have stagflation for decades. What you could end up having is just turning into Venezuela eventually. And the way things are politically looking in the U.S., if we get socialism, it's going to be Venezuela. It's going to be. It, there's no way of stopping that. So the bond market is telling me that this is a bull trap, and I, I, I called this. Now, the only way that this doesn't turn into a bull trap, what will happen is the stock market, what could happen? So there's many scenarios that could happen, but this is what's probably going to happen. So let's delete this arrow. It's no longer valid. Let's say the stock market sells off again. If it does this, rate hikes are off the table and they'll start talking about rate cuts. So lowering the interest rate back down towards zero. And then what will happen is for next year or a year and a half, you know, the stock market could trade sideways for a very long time. Now, if it starts falling back down further, starts revisiting this low we just had a month ago the fed's gonna freak out and then they're gonna bring qe and quantitative money easing printing back on the table and what could happen is the stock market will start just taking off like a rocket again 
And let me take it to a weekly chart so you can see this better. And what will happen is we could, uh, the stock market will just go past all-time highs. But if this happens, right, what's, what what, what's going to happen? The dollar is going to be sacrificed. The dollar will tank. Gold and silver will go to the moon. I mean, once the stock market pulls back again, which could be any day now, next week, this week, gold and silver is probably going to start taking off again. This entire time, gold and silver will be taking off like a rocket. But once they do QE again, right, and the stock market takes off like a rocket, gold and silver will take will take off even they'll go past their all-time high of two, gold will go past two thousand dollars your stocks are gonna go i don't know to the moon and this will start looking like, like it'll turn into that venezuelan chart i was just showing you guys and eventually we'll get a blow off top and uh i don't know but i don't know how long this will last this uh but that's what could happen so just be prepared for that that's why you don't short the stock market because if anything it's in their best interest to keep the banks from going under and keeping the stock market from going under because once corporations and banks start going under the public will freak they'll riot you know you'll have revolutions and that's what their main concern is but the public is less likely to do anything dramatic if the dollar is slowly uh, selling off and uh, because people don't notice that people don't mo notice a, a 2% increase a 5% increase in the cost of food and everything uh, month over month yeah they will eventually notice it but by the time they notice it, it you know maybe another year or two has passed and um, but the public's pretty pretty stupid they don't say they don't you know voice their opinion or they don't um they're not going to complain until it's at the point where they're losing everything they lost their new cars they leased they lose they start losing their homes and they don't understand why their paychecks just can't pay for anything anymore and they're already uh over um debted by the way here's another good article i'll post this in the comment section where is it So, this is not the article. Here's the article. Projected U.S. budget deficit. Uh, line four pictures. Budget deficits versus actual increase in debt. So, this is the budget deficit for the, gov for the Gov. The federal deficit is the blue line. Actual increase in debt is the orange line. So the blue line, you can see it's gradually just going higher and higher. And, you know, Trump doesn't like talking about that. And neither do the Dems. The, the, both sides of the parties, they don't talk about the deficit. Because, uh, you know, it's unsustainable and they don't want the public to realize that. Gross public debt actual through 2017. By the way, the budget deficit... The baby boomers, the older people, they don't care. They think they're not going to live to see the, the day of reckoning. And they don't give a shit what happens to their kids and their grandkids. That's why they, none of them talk about it. That's why nobody talks about it at the dinner table. They'll say, oh, we won't live to see. They, that's what they think. They won't live to see. They don't care about their kids and whatnot that they sold out their futures. Um, gross public debt actual through 2017. So this is public debt. Your credit cards, home, mortgages, car loans, everything. And it's just, it's, it's, it's starting to go into a hyperbolic, uh, chart where it starts going straight up like the Bitcoin bubble chart. <laughs> so, and it, that's what it's going to do. There's an, it's going to do that. It's going to go straight up because there's interest on all of this debt. And it starts compounding. That's why we're, we're starting to see delinquencies on car loans and uh, student loans. 
projected deficits versus projected increase in debt. I mean, these are lies. It, they're going to go up. This is I, These projections that they put out are based off of the economy growing at like 3% year over year with no inflation, with no recession for like the next 10 to 15 years, which is, that's fantasy. All right, so let's take a look at the 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 yield curve because everyone keeps talking about it, I'm freaking out. I mean, not much has changed since the last time, but I found an even better chart I could show you guys. So I'm going to press play, and then here on the chart, the S&P 500 is the blue line. The one-year constant maturity rate for bonds is the black line. And the green line is the 10-year constant maturity rate for uh, bonds. And these uh, gray sections you see on the chart here, these are recessions and stock market corrections or crashes. So let, And then on the left here is the yield curve. And I'm not going to post this in the comment section. Some of you guys need to come and visit us in the in the chat rooms and i'm gonna post this in the chat rooms of mmg invest wolfpack cryptos and uh of course the uh the private memberships for both for uh gold silver mm inequities which is mmg invest elite group private membership and then wolfpack cryptos private membership group as well so let's take a look at this for a second All right, you guys saw it there. I forgot to put on my cameras. There you go. You can see me now. Um, so you guys should come over to the chat groups because I'm not always making videos, right? Uh, here's the newsroom of Wolfpack Cryptos. I mean, I keep you guys updated on stocks and uh, cryptos as well. My thoughts and opinions. So, there you go. There's two uh, chat groups as well. So, I'm going to post that in the chat rooms if you guys want this. All right. Now, I think I've covered everything for now. I don't want to make this a long video. Oh, let's talk about gold for a second. I think uh, if the Fed get, becomes even more dovish, I mean, gold's been holding up, guys. It's been holding up pretty well. The weekly chart is concerning because of uh, the oscillators here. As you can see, the MACD just crossed to the downside. But look at this. It did pull back, and it's already uh, moving back up. We have three uh, green candles in a row trading above each other. On the weekly time frame, which is a bullish uh, candle pattern. So I, I think, you know, gold could ignore technicals if the Fed becomes dovish and it's above 1300 again, major, major support and resistance. I'm telling you, once gold gets past 
uh, this previous high of um, 1350, 1380 area, it's off to the races. And you do not want to miss out on that. So uh, go to mmginvest.com. I've done a, re a research report on uh, mining stocks. And, uh, you know, some of you guys are going to take advantage of that and you're going to do very well. Product should pay for itself. Also, these moving averages are about to cross my blue equilibrium line, which is also very bullish. So the price, it didn't quite get to uh, my 1270 target, but uh, it did bounce off my blue equilibrium line, which was at 1280. So I missed it by 10 bucks, the dip buying opportunity. But the stocks, the mining stocks themselves didn't really take off. It's just the gold futures. So it's not like you missed out on the dip buying opportunity. So uh, it's looking good for gold as of right now. I think it could easily ignore uh, some of these technicals and take off. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm just saying I'm watching gold right now. And the Fed meeting this Wednesday will also determine if it's going to take off again to the races. All right, guys. So visit MMG Invest, visit WolfpackCryptos.io, and uh, check out all the links below this video. Smash that like. Please share my videos, and leave in the comment sections your thoughts and opinions. Until next time.